is dead. He emphasized the idea that you show me your faith without any works. I'll show you my faith by some works. That suggests the idea, I don't care what you say. I don't care how you act. I don't care how you function. If you're not actively involved inside the body of Christ, an active worker in the God's church, you have no faith. James said if you got faith and you ain't got no works, you got a dead faith. Don't tell me how much you love the Lord, how much you trust the Lord. And well, I just, brother, I just, I just, it ain't, it ain't that I don't love the Lord. It, I love the Lord. It ain't that. I just can't stand them. Oh, do that. I just can't take the people up in there. Well, that's why John said in First John, how can you claim to love a God who you've never seen and you can't love the folk you see every day? Amen. God gave you us to teach you how to love. We're going to help you love. We're going to rough it up on you, God. Bless you. So, so James says, maturity scene in chapter 2, but how you handle, how you handle, your, how you handle uh, your, your faith. And then in chapter chapter 3, he says that that have a respected person. He identifies the, the necessity that maturity scene and how you handle dealing with people. That you don't respect one person over another. The early is your maturity scene and how you handle your tongue. The most difficult member of your body is caged. Put a set of teeth in front of it and try to keep them still. And then that's why I put lips to cover that up. And you still break up out of that and got something to say. That's why sometimes you bite your own tongue. <laughs> he identifies the reality that if you are mature in maturity, if you are a sign of spiritual maturity, is the ability to control your own tongue. And then James will say that uh, uh, next chapter four, chapter four, another sign of maturity is that you understand there's a difference between wisdom from above and wisdom from below, because wisdom from below divides people. It is, by, by the James says, James chapter 4, that the wisdom from below, it is sensual, mm -hmm. it is fleshly, yeah. it is devilish. Right. It divides, it, it, it connects with what he calls selfish ambition. Anything that divides is not from God. <laughs> but he said the wisdom from above has a tendency to create an environment of peace. People who have spiritual wisdom know how to bring folk closer together. That's a sign of spiritual maturity. Then in James chapter 5, he, he talks, he calls up chapter 4, he talks about another sign of spirituality that you are, if you're spiritually mature, then you understand that no matter what your plans are, you need God inside your plans. Right. And you set God's path and direction for the course of your life. Then chapter 5, he concludes by talking about the idea that if you're spiritually mature, when you face the dilemmas of life and the challenge of life, if you need prayer, you ain't got no problem asking for prayer. And that you reach out to save those who are struggling. A sign of spiritual maturity is you don't complain because you understand that it don't matter where you are or what you got, you got it from God. God has allowed your life to face what it's facing. Which is why even Joseph, as Joseph was, was thrown into, into, the, into Potiphar's house as a slave and then dragged out and thrown into prison at, at the age of 17, from 17 to 31, he had all this trauma inside of his life. From 17 to 31, he did not see God's hand at one step along the way, but he did not lose his faith. Because when you're strong like God calls you to be strong, you don't lose your faith. Even if you can't see Joseph could not see what God was doing, but it didn't cause him to become angry and bitter. Job can look out and say, one day I lost all my children, I lost all my money, I lost my flock, I lost my houses, I lost my land, I lost my respect, I lost my, I've lost everything. But with all that I've lost, I understand that God gave it to me. I thank God that I had it. I let God take it away. Bless you, Lord. I thank you for what I already had. When you're mature, you don't complain because you know ain't nothing belong to you in the first. You're going to need a pretty car right here. That's right. God bless you. Yeah. Just about, I don't complain. I don't 
Don't complain. So first thing I want to see, first thing I identify, a child of God who's trying to be what God wants you to be is somebody who left from the energy of the time complaining about what God has allowed it. I've heard and I'm going through struggle. I understand. If that's going, and I, I do the best I can personally. I, I, I do the best I can, but I got to tell you, every now and then, I can complain. Yeah. 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 Everybody does. But you ought to be seeking to reach a level of spiritual maturity. Like Paul said, I don't like to talk and brag and boast about it. I don't like to get negative and dismissive. But I, I, every now and then, Paul said, I, had to, I got to do this for them, for them, not for my benefit, so I can feel better. I do it so that the Corinthians can see the necessity of how they must see everything. Yeah. Well, well. You ought not to make that mindset a part of your nature. Because some folk complain about everything. Amen. Everything. It's like the woman that was uh, in the kitchen. You know, she was in the kitchen and looking through her window at her neighbor's house, and she was complaining. And you know, that's the woman I just can't stand. She, the ladies came and closed out on the line. She's looking at you know the sheets are dirty in that house, and they're just talking about it. So a uh, friend stopped by her house, and she said, "Well, she said, honey, come in my kitchen." So she went to her kitchen. She's chewing tobacco, so and spit tobacco. So she come in the kitchen. When a friend walked in the kitchen with her, and she chewed tobacco. So look, look at that house. Look at, look at that house. House all dirty and dingy. Look at the outside the house looking all dingy. And look at them white sheets, supposed to be white, all stained sheets. And I mean, her, her friend would look out of the window as she was watching the juice tobacco and she said, well, honey, that, that ain't, uh, that, that ain't in the house and her clothes ain't dirty. She said, that, that's tobacco spit stains on your window. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times, what you see is negative about somebody else is because your eyes are messed up. Paul identifies that. I, 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 I ain't going to complain. <laughs> tell somebody, I ain't going to complain. I ain't going to complain. And then tell them, I, know this was, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. But Paul talks about himself. You, you got to hear this. You got to look at Acts, Acts nine. You got to glance at Acts nine. I want you to see because I want you to, that, that the, 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 the fruit don't fall too far from the tree. I want you to see. I want you to see that what God let happen in the life of the Apostle Paul, God will let happen in your life as well. Look, look at Acts chapter nine. Acts chapter nine. Acts nine. And I want you to hear what Paul says as he looks at as he looks at his own life and his own ministry. I want you to see what, what it said about him. He, Ananias is being told by God, by, by, by God. I want you to go and, and go talk to this guy by the name of Saul. I want you to go teach Saul and share with him the gospel. Acts 9, verse 15 and 16. Here what he says. The Lord said to Ananias, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles. Kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. I have chosen Saul to praise God. I have chosen God Saul to do the holy dance. I chose him so for, for comedy show. To laugh and have fun. I have chosen Saul to suffer. Well, my my. Paul said he knew. Look in Acts 20. Acts 20. Same idea. He, he would Paul, and we looked at this text last week, but look again in, in Acts 20 and verse 20, 23. <laughs> Psalm 22. He says this. And see, now I go. I go bound in the spirit. Bound, that's chain. I go chain. My spirit feels like it's chained. You don't like to be chained and dragged. I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that are going to happen when I get there. I don't know what it's going to be like in Jerusalem. Let me tell you what I do know. Verse 20, 23. All I know is the Holy Spirit has testified that in every city, chain. And tribulations are waiting on me. I don't know what's ahead. All I know is ahead ain't nothing but some trouble. I came into this knowing I'm going to have trouble. Yeah. Yes, sir. Disappointment comes 
from unrealized expectations. If you really thought becoming a Christian meant that your troubled days were over, then you're about to be seriously disappointed. Paul says that when I came into this, I, I, it was prophesied to me in advance, prophesied that, that Saul, when you come into this, you come in and you are going to have trouble. The word he had chosen is a word for idea of, of looking at a group and saying that one. God has chosen you. Well, well. But he says, he has cho I, I have been chosen to suffer. Here's what's interesting about that word suffer. The Greek word, the Greek word for suffer, uh, has the idea of, a, of, a, of an outside pressure. It has the idea of something external. The word has the idea to experience something that comes from the outside. To experience something that comes from the outside that first of all is bad. And then later becomes good. Now, I've not had this personal experience, and some of you may have. Uh, personally, I doubt if, I, I know I haven't, I'm sure you haven't, and I would seriously doubt if you have, but, um, but uh, I hear that childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, has initially, has pain. Yes. Is that, is that validating? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And it begins, and I, I, I've seen the movies, and I've seen the documentaries, and all Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Pain. But then, 